types of systems, isolated, closed, and open. So a system is used to describe the particular part of the universe that we're trying to focus on. So it can be very small, it could be a petri dish, a, uh, a beaker, whatever it may be. And the system helps us describe what we're part paying particular attention from, but a system is considered different from the surroundings or the environment. So there's a system, there's a system, plus its surroundings, plus its surroundings. So there are three types of systems. There's an isolated system, a system that does not allow the transfer of either mass or energy to or from its surroundings. So hopefully, let's say you have a, f a thermos flask, something that you can hold something in, it's not going to exchange matter or energy with its surroundings. It's keeping the heat inside and it is making sure that your, your drink is hot if you want it hot and it's not changing mass with the outside world. Now, its surroundings. So now we have also a closed system, a system that enables the exchange of energy, usually in the form of heat, but not mass with its surroundings. So a radiator, let's say, will allow the exchange of energy, of heat energy, to its surroundings because we want it to get warmer, but it's still a closed system because no mass is being, no mass is being is being put out, is, is being exchanged. So an open system then is a system that can exchange both mass and energy. You, and energy again usually in the form of heat with its surroundings. So let's say water molecules that are going into a gas phase, so if I'm, as I'm boiling water it's an open system because I'm exchanging the mass, the mass of the water is going down because the water is escaping into gas and putting and bringing that heat energy with them as it steams out of a pot. So we have three types of systems that describe the, the transfer of either energy or mass, and understanding them is important so we can understand experimental data and understand laws of thermodynamics and how they work.